If you've ever had a conversation with a vegan, especially if the vegan is someone you're close to, you know that things can get heated pretty quickly. But did you know that there are two words you can say that can change everything? These words are only as powerful as the understanding they're based on. So before I tell you what they are, I'm going to help you understand a bit about vegan psychology. Imagine that you're sitting in your local coffee shop, sipping your morning coffee or tea, and a stranger approaches you. This person tells you that meat and dairy don't come from cows and chickens and pigs, but from dogs and cats. Of course, you don't believe them. But the informant takes you on a tour and shows you the factories where these animals are raised and killed. Shocked, you see golden retrievers and tabby cats, pugs and Persians, and more. You hear their yelps, hisses, and screams. You witness kittens being ground up alive and puppies being torn from their howling mothers and animals being skinned alive while fully conscious. Later, as you drive to work, you see truckloads of these animals on their way to slaughter. Seeing their eyes and noses pressed up against the vehicle's tiny metal grates, you feel helpless to do anything but say a silent prayer for a swift death. In the evening, you return home to your family to find that they're serving meat for dinner. You look at the food and are flooded with memories of the horrors you just witnessed. You tell your family what you've learned. But they didn't see what you saw, and they don't want to hear what you have to say. So you share more details and start reeling off statistics. But they tell you you're overreacting, and it's not as bad as you're making it out to be. Besides, they know someone who raises dogs in his backyard and those animals don't suffer. Desperate for them to understand the truth, you amp it up, highlighting the worst of the worst of the abuses. But now, you're coming across as a little unhinged. Your family snaps at you and tells you to stop imposing your values on them, saying, you make your choices, I'll make mine. Since that day, your life has fundamentally changed. It's not that you see different things. You see the same things differently. Part of you wishes you could just go back to blissful ignorance. But you can't unsee what you saw, and your new awareness, coupled with your guilt about having been complicit in the problem yourself, compels you to do everything in your power to end the suffering. It's just a matter of getting enough people to see the truth. So you use every opportunity to raise awareness. But you quickly learn that, even though some people are open to your message, Many people respond like your family did. Not only do they resist the information you share, but they get angry at you for bringing it up in the first place. It's getting harder and harder not to feel angry yourself. And you're starting to lose faith in humanity. Meanwhile, you've started going to demonstrations and joined online communities of like-minded people. You're exposed to graphic images of tortured dogs and cats that reignite your horror and are turning your anger into moral outrage. And now, your relationships are starting to suffer. Try as you might, you can't help but direct your anger toward the people in your life, who you'd expect to be as horrified as you about the problem. And you're struggling to maintain your sense of connection with people who suddenly seem to have such different values from you. You're also in a constant state of fight or flight, since reminders of the atrocity are everywhere. Even your own home isn't a safe refuge. When you see milk in your refrigerator or meat on the dinner table, you can't help but have flashbacks to the horrors you witnessed, and you end up flooded with sadness and anger. And you're constantly worried that you'll have to see the people who you desperately want to feel connected with cooking and eating the victims of the atrocity. On top of all this, you feel like a failure for not being able to convince even those in your own inner circle to stop harming animals. You feel guilty and ashamed for letting the animals down. You don't know what to do to feel better, except to get the people around you to see what you've seen, in the hope that they'll come to the same conclusion as you. So you push harder to make them understand. But the harder you push, the more they resist. You're stuck in a painful cycle that you believe will only be broken if others stop eating animals. You start to feel like an outsider. If you're lucky, you have at least one ally in your life, a person who understands and supports you and your cause. But still, you're often the only person at events who doesn't eat animals, and people talk to or about you like you're strange. Your friends say things like, don't tell me about your diet, you'll ruin my meal, before you even open your mouth. 
Your colleagues hold office parties where there's nothing you can eat. Your brother dangles his filet of puppy in front of you and makes barking noises, and everyone at the table laughs and then tells you you have no sense of humor because you don't join in. Your spouse accuses you of imposing your values on your children when you say you want to consider raising them not to eat animals, even though raising them to eat animals is also imposing values, and even though people are normally expected to raise their children according to their own values, which is why, for example, nobody expects a Christian to raise their children as Jewish. As you continue learning about dog and cat slaughter, you continue to expand your thinking and adapt your lifestyle. You learn about carnism, the invisible belief system that conditions people to eat certain animals and to resist information that would open their eyes to the truth of what's happening. You stop wearing leather gloves after discovering they're made from kitten skins, and you stop wearing scarves that you've learned <laughs> contain dog fur. These changes only confirm others' beliefs that you're being extreme, and your family complains that you're going too far. Even though to you, your behaviors are simply evolving as your awareness evolves. Even though your choice to stop eating animals was deeply empowering and you feel a profound sense of purpose and inspiration in your life, you also feel distressed, in no small part because of the disruption this choice has caused to your relationships. You feel like nobody understands your experience. You feel invisible, including to the people you were once closest to. So the two words you can say to a vegan that can change everything? I understand. Like all people, vegans need to feel that their inner world is seen, that they're understood, especially when it comes to the things that are most important to them. You may think that unless you agree to stop eating animals, nothing else you say matters. For some vegans, this may be the case. But for many, understanding significantly diffuses tension. And once you've come to a place of understanding, you can decide whether you want to learn more about veganism and perhaps become a vegan ally, someone who's not fully vegan, but who supports veganism and who just tries to be as vegan as possible. So the next time you're struggling to relate to a vegan, or anyone for that matter, just try to see the world through their eyes. Understanding creates connection, and it's the cornerstone of healthy relationships and a compassionate world.